Chronic, Minister Councillor for Political Affairs, U.S. Embassy, um, uh, Beth Webster, U.S. Council for Western France, uh, Monsieur le Député, Monsieur le Maire, uh, Distinguished Guest, um, Major General Mayor, Commanding General First Infantry Division, um, General Pound from Estonia, um, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, uh, welcome to all of you. I will start this ceremony giving some news about Charles because all of you uh, understand he's not here with us today. Uh, he needs to relax a little bit. He will recover with all our prayers. Every soldier on this beach was a hero on D-Day 80 years ago, regardless of his military unique or rank. An estimated 550 uh, tribesmen participated in Operation Overlord on the 6th of June 1944 as paratroopers, airmen, seamen, coast guards, or as ground troops landing on the beaches codenamed Juno Beach, Utah Beach, and Omaha Beach not forgetting those who served in medical detachments like Private Charles Shea, un who landed unarmed under the famous WN-62, the deadliest point on Omaha Beach. Charles Shea was not the only Penobscot from his small Indian reservation in Maine. In this small tribe from the northeast coast of the United States, over 80% of men in age serving during World War, World War II aboard the USS Henrico en route to Omaha Beach, Charles talked with his buddy, Melvin Neptune, who was a longtime veteran of the Big Red One, the best division ever. Having heavily fought previously in North Africa and Sicily, instead of talking about, the, about what was going on, they choose to spend this time talking about home, their families, and their common friends. Melvin was a scout in the 16th Infantry Regiment. Also, another Penobscot and friend of Charles, Leslie Banks, also served in Normandy. Most of these, en of these men enlisted. Some, like Charles, were drafted. They all served violently despite the fact they were still discriminated in their own country. 
Some of you know, might know that Charles was not allowed to vote in 1945 when some elections, local elections, took place in Maine. But they had the, the right to be killed, right? Um, the landing here in Normandy, facing a hell, a deluge of fire and blood, and they fought to liberate the land, France, which, not the, not, which was not theirs. About 175 Native Americans came ashore here on Omaha Beach on June 6, 1944. Today, we remember them. Many tribes were represented during the Battle of Normandy, including Anishinaabe, Apache, Kawila, Cherokee, Chickasaw, Chippewa, Choctaw, Coeur d'Alene, Comanche, Creek, Remes, Kumeya, Lakota, Lumbi, Lumni, Maricopa, Navajo, Nepercé, Odawa, Onadondonga, Otoe, Passamaquoddies, Penobscot, Potawami, Pueblo, Seneca, Sioux, Tuscarora, Ute, and Ushi, or Ushi. We owe our freedom to these young men who gave their all for our liberty, individually and collectively. Accepted for one or maybe two, all these brave men and women have already passed into the spirit's world. We will not forget their sacrifice. We will remember them and will pass the torch to the next generations. That's our duty. And as everybody knows, duty first. Several Native Americans, veterans, and their families join us to, uh, today to honor Charles and remember the sacrifice of their, of their ancestors. Today, history repeats itself. The war is back in Europe, four hours flight from this beach, in a complex geopolitical situation. We all know the price of freedom and the sacrifice of these men representing the greatest generation may not be vain. God bless them all. The message of Charles to the youngest generations 80 years after D-Day is very simple. Always be ready to defend your country, our values, if necessary. No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first. Thank you very much. Monsieur le maire de Saint-Laurent. Merci. Monsieur le député, Monsieur le conseiller départemental, Monsieur, Madame, Messieurs, Madame les maires, Monsieur le général Meilleur, Monsieur le colonel Herbert, Messieurs les Américains, Messieurs, Mesdames, en vos grades et qualités, Mesdames, Messieurs. Dear distinguished guests, Dans trois semaines, Charles fêtera son centième anniversaire. In three weeks' time, Charles will celebrate his 100th anniversary. C'est toujours avec une grande émotion que nous lui rendons hommage, ainsi qu'à toutes celles et ceux qui appartenaient à cette jeunesse téméraire, quelles que soient leurs origines, dont beaucoup allaient sacrifier leur vie au service de la défense de la liberté confronté au mal absolu et à ses atrocités. It's always with the same emotion that we pay tribute to him, as well as those who belong to that bold youth, whatever their origins were, many of whom were going to sacrifice their life in the service of freedom faced with sheer evil and its horror. Ne jamais oublier Omaha la sanglante. Les pertes sur Omaha, imaginez un soldat mort tous les 3 mètres sur 3 km de plage. Never forget Omaha Beach, Omaha, bloody Omaha. The appalling losses on that beach. Imagine 
one soldier dead soldier lying every three meters on the two mile long shore. À cinq ans, Charles sauve son petit frère de la noyade. Et à quinze et quinze ans plus tard, il sauvait des soldats blessés qui se débattaient dans l'eau sanglante de Maha Beach. When he was five, Charles saved his little brother who was drowning. Fifteen years later, he was pulling wounded soldiers from the waves on bloody Omaha. Toute sa vie, confronté à des événements, des événements tragiques, apportant une réponse immédiate pour venir en aide aux autres, être infirmier de guerre, vaincre la peur et aller là où on avait besoin de lui. Throughout his life, faced with tragic events, he responded, he was there. His job was to save lives. He told us in July the four, on July the 4th, 2020, to help comrades to be a war medic, overcome fear and go where he was needed. À chaque fois, le petit rat musqué, surnom Penoscope, a fait le job, son devoir, dans tous les actes héroïques de sa vie. Every time, Little Muskrat, his Penobscot nickname, did the job, as in all the heroic deeds in his life. Aujourd'hui, pour nous souvenir, nous avons ce lieu mémoriel avec la tortue, cet animal associé au grand mythe et à la création du monde, symbole de la sagesse et de la persévérance. Today, to remember, we have this place, this memorial site with the turtle, that animal associated with the creation of the world, symbol of wisdom and resilience. Her head is looking west towards the United States, the state of Maine. Donc, uh, sa tête est tournée vers les USA, vers l'état du Maine. Nous sommes très reconnaissants et très fiers d'avoir créé un lieu de recueillement pour tous les Amérindiens qui ont perdu ici la vie en combattant pour la libération de l'Europe. We are grateful and very proud to have a place of remembrance all the Native Americans who fought for the liberation of Europe. Guys, sorry. Des gars, des plaines et des bois qui ont donné leur vie pour la liberté des gens d'ici, dans des lieux qu'ils ne connaissaient pas. Guys from the plains and the woods who gave their lives for the freedom of people who were living here in places they didn't know. Merci Charles pour avoir illustré magnifiquement la célèbre citation de Thomas Jefferson dans le second paragraphe du premier article de la Déclaration d'indépendance des États-Unis, le 4 juillet 1776. Thank you, Charles, for illustrating beautifully the famous quotation, the words said by Thomas Jefferson in the second paragraph of the first article of the Declaration of Independence of the United States on July the 4th, 1776. Vous avez le droit inaliénable Vous avez le droit inaliénable à la vie, la liberté et la poursuite du bonheur. Those words were you have the inalienable right to life, freedom and the pursuit of happiness. Nous espérons que les générations futures se souviendront longtemps de ce qui s'est passé ici et de tous les héros de la Deuxième Guerre mondiale et de ce qu'ils ont, qu ont fait pour nous et donc pour eux. We hope that future generations will never forget. Never forget what happened here. and all the Second World War heroes and all they did for us and for them. 
Sachez notre profonde affection et notre gratitude pour vous tous, et en particulier en ce jour pour la nation indienne. Know that we are deeply grateful. Be sure of our deepest affection, all of you, all the Native Americans, na American nations. Pour terminer, j'aimerais préciser les circonstances particulières de cette année où nous célébrons le Didet dans les trois communes d'Oma et ici à Saint-Laurent-sur-Mer. Nous rendons hommage en même temps aux Amérindiens en ce 80e anniversaire du débarquement. I would like to conclude by explaining the peculiar circumstances this year where we celebrate Didet in the three villages on Omaha Beach and here in Saint Laurent, we pay tribute to, at the same time, to all the same, all the Americans, all American Indians, all native Indians in that 80th anniversary of D-Day. Cette association de cérémonies est en fait un symbole. This association of ceremonies is actually symbolical. Non de séparation, mais d'unité, de communication et de combat pour préserver la liberté, à, notre liberté à tous. It is a symbol not of division, but of unity, community and struggle for our freedom, everyone's freedom. Je vous remercie. To give his remarks. Merci, madame. Good morning, distinguished senior leaders of our allied armed forces. Uh, welcome and thank you all for coming to the ceremony where we remember uh, our good friend Charles Shea, and I'm sure everyone here uh, has him in your hearts and on your minds, and I hope you will share prayers for his recovery according to your faith. It is a tremendous privilege for me to share a few thoughts and words uh, with you on this occasion. Uh, this uh, memorial garden, of course, is named for Charles, but it honors all of the Native Americans who participated in the D-Day invasion and the Normandy campaign that followed. We think, but we do not know, that there were about 500 Native Americans that landed with the American and Canadian forces on the shores of Normandy. All of them were twice the Patriots. They served willingly as every American soldier did, and they served at a time when they knew that the United States did not treat them as equal citizens and that they were heirs of a history of great abuse of their people. There are many uh, initiatives that, are, that uh, compose the legacy of Charles Shea. And one of them is this ceremony and another And another is the research and academic work that um, uh, Madame Legrand uh, has inspired in several of us to know more about the Native Americans who served here. Yesterday, I took a group of Native American veterans and their family members on a tour of uh, Normandy between here and Saint Lo. We had identified the place where several, where each of several American soldiers gave his life for our countries and for freedom. The helicopter was just flying over 
That was for Charles. We stopped at every place that we had identified where a Native American soldier of the United States Army gave his life for our country and for our collective freedom. We don't know the total numbers. We don't know the total numbers that are buried in the military cemetery uh, here on Omaha Beach or the cemetery in Brittany, but we know they were in the hundreds possibly in the thousands. The purpose of this garden and this memorial is to remember these men, lest their contribution to the war be lost in the collective memory that we have of all the soldiers, all of whom we honor and respect. So my contribution to that mission since we cannot recount every story of every soldier, we can remember their names, and I want to offer some of them to you this morning. Private Eugene Anderson, Unknown Tribe, Oklahoma, 90th Infantry Division, killed in action August 8, 1944. Private Nelson Barnosky, Muskogee Tribe, Oklahoma, 2nd Infantry Division, killed in action July 11th, 1944. Private First Class Donald Beaver, Cotto Tribe, Pennsylvania, 90th Infantry Division, killed in action July 8th, 1944. Private Martin Chavez, Lumbee Tribe, North Carolina, 4th Infantry Division, killed in action June 14, 1944. Technical Sergeant Aaron Cusher, Choctaw Tribe, Oklahoma, 2nd Infantry Division, killed in action August 4, 1944. Private Alexander de Montigny, Ojibwa Tribe, North Dakota, 90th Infantry Division, killed in action July 22, 1944. Private Benny DeWitt, Sioux Tribe, South Dakota, 9th Infantry Division, killed in action July 14, 1944. Private Alfred Ferguson, Maricopa Tribe, Arizona, 5th Infantry Division, killed in action July 27, 1944. Technical Sergeant Wilbur Harkins, Choctaw Tribe, Oklahoma, 2nd Infantry Division, killed in action July 26, 1944. 2nd Lieutenant James Jones, Blackfoot Tribe, Mississippi, 83rd Infantry Division, killed in action. July 5th, 1944. Private Eldor Nags, Tribe Unknown, Home of Record Ontario, Canada, and Michigan in the United States, 9th Infantry Division, killed in action. July 15th, 1944. Private First Class Elmore Lewis, Navajo from New Mexico, 2nd Infantry Division, killed in action. July 25th. 1944. Private First Class John C. Logan, Choctaw Tribe, Oklahoma, 90th Infantry Division, June, killed in action June 19, 1944. Private Isidro A. Mendoza, Tribe Unknown, Texas, 2nd Infantry Division, killed in action July 7, 1944. Sergeant Julian Montes, Tribe Unknown, Texas, 83rd Infantry Division, killed in action July 14, 1944. Technical Sergeant Joshua Wilson, Choctaw Tribe, Kansas, killed in action July 24, 1944.
This is a small sample of our fellow Americans of native origin who died for freedom here in Normandy during the terrible Second World War. Uh, I want to share just a few thoughts, and I apologize that I cannot speak French well enough to do so, so I'll ask my friend Philippe Leclerc to assist me with our conclusion. We owe these men so much. Nous devons à ces hommes autant de choses. We cannot erase the terrible wrongs done to American Indians in the past. Nous ne pouvons effacer les maux terribles du passé. But we can Amer remember that the great American army that brought freedom to millions of Europeans reflected all of the United States of America. La grande armée américaine qui nous a apporté, qui a apporté la liberté, réfléchissait l'Amérique tout entière. Pire le mal du passé par ses souvenirs ensemble. We can thank them. We can do better by their children. We can do better by their grandchildren. We can start here and we can start today. Nous pouvons transmettre tout cela aux enfants, à leurs enfants, de ces soldats, à leurs petits-enfants, et nous pouvons commencer ici, aujourd'hui. Merci. Now inviting Major General John Mayer, uh, Commanding General. Ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests, friends of the 1st Infantry Division, fellow veterans, and most importantly, the citizens of Normandy that are attending today's ceremony. Mesdames et messieurs, euh, en, vos, en vos grades et qualités, chers amis, chers amis de la première division, euh, et aussi aux citoyens euh, normands qui sont là avec nous pour cette cérémonie. I'm frequently asked, after living in Europe for 13 years, where are the two places that every American citizen should visit? On me demande souvent après ça fait 13 ans que je vis en Europe et on me demande souvent quelles sont les places que les gens devraient visiter. And the first place I tell them they should visit is a concentration camp. They should go to Auschwitz or Dachau. They should see and feel the horror and the evil as you walk through those gates. And that is what happens if we do not stand up for the values of our countries. Je leur dis souvent de euh, premièrement d'aller visiter un camp de concentration comme Auschwitz ou Dachau pour sentir euh, le, 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 le démon, euh, pour sentir tout ce qu'on peut. Et si on ne fait pas attention, c'est exactement ce qui va se passer. You get the Holocaust. Over six million people killed for their religious beliefs. Durant l'Holocauste, il y a 6 millions de personnes qui ont été tuées um, uh, à cause de leurs uh, uh, croyances religieuses. The second place that I tell every American they should go is right here. Omaha Beach, Normandy. And then visit the cemetery where 9,387 American soldiers lay buried. Et la deuxième place que je recommande à mes concitoyens américains de visiter, c'est ici en Normandie, et notamment de visiter le, le, le cimetière américain où quasiment 10 000 euh, soldats sont enterrés. Right here in Europe, two examples of our role in the world. If we do nothing to defend the values of our country, we get the Holocaust, we get a camp, we get millions killed. If we do something, or if we wait too long in the world to do something, we get Omaha Beach. We get a cemetery full of American soldiers. Et avec ces deux exemples, on peut très vite comprendre que si on ne fait rien, 
euh, on va avoir à nouveau des camps de concentration, on va avoir à nouveau des millions de personnes tuées, et on va avoir à nouveau un cimetière comme le cimetière américain. 80 years ago, on June 6, the 1st Infantry Division landed on this beach. And as part of the efforts during World War II, over 44,000 Native Americans served the armed forces. Ici, euh, à Suromaha Beach, les, les Native Americans, euh, il y avait à peu près 44 000 soldats Native Americans dans les forces armées américaines. Their service can be represented by the five Medal of Honors that they have earned, or the 51 Silver Stars. But it's also represented by the soldiers whose names you just heard earlier in the ceremony. On peut les identifier par les cinq médailles d'honneur et, et les 51 autres euh, médailles, je crois qu'il a dit Silver Star, euh, qu'ils ont, mais aussi pour euh, tout, tous les autres soldats qui viennent d'être nommés. Some of those soldiers are on a ceremony, on the monument of a ceremony, the division command sergeant major and I just left, where we laid a wreath on the monument for the 1st Infantry Division where there's 621, 627 soldiers of the Big Red One that lost their lives during the invasion. Le nom des soldats américains de la Big Red One sont mentionnés sur le monument que mon sergent-major et moi-même venons de quitter, euh, et où sont inscrits le nom de, 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 de tous ces Américains qui ont donné leur vie dans la première division d'infanterie. And while that's the third year that I've been able to do that ceremony as a division commander, It's this ceremony that is also very personal to me as a soldier. C'est la troisième année que je suis invité à participer à cette cérémonie, mais pour moi c'est euh, c'est très très personnel. My grandfather was in the invasion of North Africa, Sicily, and Salerno. My great uncle came across the sand right behind us on June 6, 1944. C'est très personnel parce que mon grand-père a débarqué en Sicilie et à Salerne et mon grand-oncle a débarqué ici uh, à Omaha Beach. So personally, this place is very important to me and it has also played a large role in how I lead the 1st Infantry Division. So vous comprenez bien que pour moi, uh, cette place est très importante et ça impacte aussi la façon dont je dirige la 1 Division d'Infanterie Américaine. For the past few years, the division has had a theme. Two years ago, it was the year of the non-commissioned officer. Uh, il y a des uh, événements à chaque fois, et à deux ans, c'était uh, l'année des, des non-commissioned officers. And a non-commissioned officer I met here in 2005, Staff Sergeant Ray Lambert. A non-commissioned officer who landed in North Africa, and it was in the invasion of Sicily, earned the Silver Star, The Bronze Star for Valor and Three Purple Hearts. Il y a deux ans, j'ai eu la chance de, de, de en 2000, je sais plus la date, j'ai eu la chance de rencontrer uh, Ray Lambert qui avait um, uh, reçu une Silver Star et des Bronze Star uh, pour uh, ses actions uh, uh, de vaillance. And as a squad leader on June 6, he was shot twice on the beach a few hundred meters from here shot twice leading his soldiers as a squad leader in saving the lives of 12 of his men. Et comme chef d'équipe, il a été blessé deux fois sur cette euh, sur cette plage et il a continué à à sauver des vies euh, sur la plage. Often in the American army we talk about the strength of our army and we never really articulate it. It's our non-commissioned officer corps who trains disciplined units where soldiers are trained to a standard and everybody is held accountable. Dans l'armée américaine, en fait, les non-commissioned officers servent à entraîner ceux qui sont euh, juste derrière d'un point de vue hiérarchique et on doit vraiment pas les oublier. Non-commissioned officers like Staff Sergeant Lambert who led their soldiers off their beach, off this beach when the officers were killed. Non-commissioned officers who won on this beach that day. Les non-commissioned officers ont, ont pris le relais quand les officiers ont été tués sur cette, sur cette euh, plage. And one of the things non-commissioned officers do is they train their soldiers. And one of the soldiers that Staff Sergeant Lambert trained was a 19-year-old private from Maine named Charles Shea. Et les, les non-commissioned officers entraînent les soldats. Et en ce qui concerne Ray Lambert, 
Euh, il a entraîné le jeune soldat euh, Charles Chay, âgé de 19 ans. A young man volunteering to serve his country who landed on the beach and earned the silver star for the 20 soldiers he saved that morning. Un jeune homme qui a débarqué sur uh, Omaha Beach et qui a qui a sauvé plus de 20 personnes sur la plage ce jour-là ce, ce matin-là. Charles Shea, who I've been privileged to know for years and had the opportunity to spend some time with two nights ago. Charles Shea and the soldiers like him inspired the theme of the division for this year, the year of victory. J'ai eu la chance de participer, de, de connaître Charles Chet et de participer à, à un événement avec lui il y a deux jours. Et c'est des, des gens comme Charles Chet qui inspirent la première division. And they represent the long motto of the 1st Infantry Division. From hell to victory, we are the fighting first. No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great, duty first. Et ce, ce sont eux qui inspirent la première division et qui euh, ont donné naissance au motto de la division. Il n'y a pas de sacrifice trop grand, euh, il n'y a pas de mission trop, di trop difficile, le devoir d'abord. The year of victory is dedicated to the soldiers who landed on this beach that morning. Those soldiers who liberated a continent and gave hope that tomorrow will be better than today. Cette année, c'est l'année de la victoire et euh, elle est dédiée aux soldats qui ont euh, donné leur vie et libéré euh, ce territoire. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for attending today's ceremony. It is an honor to be here with you. No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first. Thank you. I'm now invited Mrs. Kimberly uh, Kruneck Minister Councillor for Political Affairs, U.S. Embassy. Monsieur le Maire, Monsieur le Préfet, General Myers, Colonel Herbert, Madame Lagrande. Mesdames et Messieurs, chers amis, dear friends, we will hold many commemoration ceremonies across France this year to honor the memory of the Americans and other allies who fought and died in World War II defending our democratic values. Today's ceremony is special for recalling the sacrifices of Native Americans in the March to Liberation 80 years ago. Nous organisons de nombreuses cérémonies commémoratives à travers la France cette année pour honorer la mémoire des Américains et d'autres alliés qui sont morts pendant la Seconde Guerre mondiale en défendant nos valeurs démocratiques. La cérémonie d'aujourd'hui est spéciale car elle évoque spécifiquement les sacrifices des Amérindiens dans la marche vers la libération il y a 80 ans. Among those Native Americans, there were representatives of at least 50 different tribes across the United States. Parmi Ces Amérindiens se trouvaient des représentants d'au moins 50 tribus différents à travers les États-Unis. These young men and women showed such tenacity, courage, and humanitarian spirit in the cause of liberty. I wanted to share with you some of the impressive facts that make their participation so inspirational for all of us. Ces jeunes hommes et femmes ont fait preuve d'une telle ténacité, d'un tel courage, et d'un tel esprit humanitaire au service de la liberté. C'est pourquoi je voulais partager avec vous quelques faits impressionnants qui rendent leur participation si inspirant pour nous tous. As we've heard, up to 50,000 Native Americans fought in World War II, including 44,000 from the U.S. and 5,000 from Canada. On estime que 50 000 Amérindiens ont combattu, ont combattu euh, pendant la Seconde Guerre mondiale, dont 44, viennent, 44 000 viennent des États-Unis et 5 000 du Canada. Of that number, 25,000 indigenous men served in combat roles. This amounted to nearly one-third of all Native American men between the ages of 18 and 50 who could pass their physical exam. They served in every branch of the military, in every theater of war. Parmi eux, 
50 000 hommes autochtones sont, se sont engagés dans des missions de combat. Cela représente près d'un tiers de tous les hommes amérindiens âgés de 18 à 50 ans et ont réussi leur examen physique. Ils sont servis dans toutes les branches de l'armée, des forces armées et tous les théâtres d'opération. This includes several hundred Native American women as nurses. And these figures represented as much as 70% of the population of some tribes. Parmi eux se trouvaient aussi plusieurs centaines de femmes amérindiennes en tant qu'infirmières. Ces chiffres représentaient jusqu'à 70% de la population de certaines tribus. In the D-Day landings, nearly 500 Native Americans fought alongside the Allied soldiers. Lors du débarquement, près de 500 Amérindiens ont combattu aux côtés des soldats alliés. However, it wasn't until 2014 that the first official commemoration for Native Americans was held on Utah Beach. It honored 14 Comanche code talkers who worked in their indigenous language, which was unintelligible to Germans and Japanese. While the Navajo code talkers in the Pacific became more well known after that project was declassified in 1968, it was Comanche soldiers who used their skills on the beaches of Normandy on D-Day until the end of the war in Europe. Interestingly, in an effort to thwart the earlier use of Native American languages as codes in World War I, Japanese and Germans visited America to research Native American languages prior to the Second World War. However, since Comanche wasn't a recorded language in books, it remained an ideal secret language. Pourtant, ce n'était que en 2014 que la première commémoration officielle des Amérindiens a eu lieu sur la plage de Utah Beach. Elle rendrait hommage à 14 code talkers, Comanche, qui travaillaient dans leur langue indigène, inintelligible pour les Allemands et les Japonais. Bien que les code talkers Navajo du Pacifique soient devenus plus connus après la déclassification du projet en 1968, ce sont les soldats Comanche qui ont utilisé leurs compétences sur les plages de Normandie lors du débarquement, et ce, jusqu'à la fin de la guerre en Europe. Il est intéressant de noter que, dans le but de contrecarrer l'utilisation intérieure des langues amérindiennes comme code pendant la Première Guerre mondiale, des Japonais et des Allemands s'étaient rendus en Amérique pour étudier les langues amérindiennes avant la Seconde Guerre mondiale. Cependant, comme le Comanche n'était pas une langue recensée dans les livres, il est resté une langue secrète et diale. These simple facts tell but a small sample of the inspiring story of Native Americans in World War II. And of course, no one knows that story better than Charles Shea, himself a Penobscot tribal elder, writer, and a decorated veteran of both World War II and the Korean War, who we are here to honor today as well. Thanks to his years of effort, more people today are aware of the Native American contribution to the security of both of our countries. We are here today to honor their sacrifices and to keep their memory alive for the next generation. Ces simples faits ne représentent que un petit échantillon de l'histoire inspirante des Amérindiens pendant la Seconde Guerre mondiale. Et bien sûr, personne ne connaît cette histoire mieux que Charles Shea, lui-même un ancien de la tribu Penobscot, écrivain et vétéran déclaré de la Seconde Guerre mondiale et de la guerre en Corée. Grâce à ses efforts, plus de personnes aujourd'hui sont conscients de la contribution des Amérindiens à la sécurité de nos deux pays. Nous sommes ici aujourd'hui pour honorer leurs sacrifices et garder leur mémoire vivante pour les générations futures. Vive l'amitié franco-américaine et merci de votre attention. Thank you. Merci, madame. So Julia Kelly, Charles passed the torch to Julia uh, a few years ago. Good morning, bonjour. I'm sorry I don't know how to speak French and I hope to learn in the future. 
<laughs> I want to welcome the 1st Infantry Division, leadership, staff, and soldiers, and also of our Allied Command. I want to thank all the Native American veterans and their families who made the trip this year, and all of them that are out there. They are representing 10 different tribes. I want to recognize any Native relatives that are in, in the audience here today. Thank you for coming. I want people and the supporters of Charles Norman Shea. My task today and every year moving forward is to say prayers for all the Native Americans who lost their lives during World War II. I am reminded by Charles that I need to pray for everyone everyone that lost their lives on D-Day and continue fighting through the villages, the hedgerows, and the swamps to free France. Part of my prayer way is to give tobacco ties to those who wish to participate. Et c'est la, alors je vais le faire en français, euh, et c'est la raison pour laquelle elle a distribué du, du tabac euh, aux participants à la cérémonie. Tobacco is a sacred plant to many tribes, and no, it isn't commercial tobacco. This is grown in, in, in the places that are sacred to natives. It is unique tobacco that grows in the wild. Ce, ce, le tabac qu'elle elle utilise n'est absolument pas... Elle, le, le tabac, d'abord, est une, une denrée, un ingrédient euh, qui est euh, très, très important, sacré pour les Native Americans. Et ce elle n'utilise absolument pas du, du tabac commercial, mais un tabac qui, euh, qui a poussé euh, dans le, de, de façon naturelle. Et de, 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 dépendant de l'histoire de la tribu, euh, c'est la raison pour laquelle euh, le, le tabac peut être différent. Depending on the tribe and story, the reason for tobacco will be different. Today, the tobacco tie you have is for prayers for remembrance. Remember those who have left before us. Today is remembering those who lost their lives on these beaches and in the villages, and in, in the hedgerows, the swamps, and along the mountain sides. Remember the French civilians, the French military, and all the allies who fought and supported during World War II. United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Greece, Netherlands, Poland, Australia, New Zealand, Norway, Yugoslavia, Philippines, Denmark, Belgium, Czechoslovakia, Brazil, South Africa, British India, the Soviet Union, and the Republic of China. They all supported supported to to free France, to get rid of the evil. And I recognize all of them. Everybody that is reckon all those World War II veterans from all the countries, it's important to recognize all of them. Please learn some history. And no, you don't have to be a historian to know history. You can be like me and I look for cliff notes. <laughs> Today I'm going to pray in silence with Marie. When I finish, you take your tobacco tie and you open it up, take the rubber band off and put the tobacco to the ground. If you wish to keep it, you may keep it and use it another time when you need to say prayers, um, strong prayers to say blessings. Alors aujourd'hui, je vais prier en, si en silence. Euh, on vous a remis un petit morceau de tabac et vous pouvez ouvrir. Euh, quelquefois, il est en enrubané dans un, dans un morceau de tissu. Vous pouvez ouvrir et, ou bien le garder à votre aise lorsque vous aurez besoin de prier une autre fois. Euh, et si vous l'ouvrez, vous, vous pouvez le, le redonner, le mettre sur le, sur le sol. Mais surtout, vous ne mettez pas les, les morceaux de tissu sur le sol. This is my way of prayers the way I was taught to care for everyone. Each of us as humans have our own spiritual ways. This is my way and I'm sharing with you. Aho gajila. C'est ma façon de, de prier et de, et de remercier euh, tout le monde. Euh, chacun de vous, euh, selon vos, 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 vos façons euh, spirituelles, selon vos habitudes spirituelles. C'est ma façon à moi, je suis heureuse de vous le partager avec vous.
for the super trolleys that all run. Thank you for everything that we do. Prayers for those that passed away from the east, that come from the east. And pray for their spirits and their journey, and that they be fruitful upon the time that we're giving prayers. I hope guys you well. God, thank you for this day. We're praying for all the people that come from the south and all those women in the south that, that passed away. We pray for all of those spirits that died. Um, the south brings those and we want to make sure that they're peaceful and where they're at and what they're doing. And this is very important. I hope I do that. qui va dire, euh, c'est pour remercier pour la vie, cette vie qui est bonne, et remercier le Créateur de nous avoir donné cette vie. Hey, oh, 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 hey,
Wechoni Makuelo Wechoni Makuelo is the French representative for the 16th Infantry Regiment in France and he is honoring four Native American soldiers uh, part of the 16th Infantry. Oh, <laughs> 